Hi everyone, this is Tim Melvin of the Tim Melvin Deep Value Report and the Banking on Profits newsletter service. And uh, you know, like you, I'm uh, I subscribe to some other newsletters and I'm on kind of everybody's marketing list. So even though I'm relatively new to all this newsletter stuff, I know that when something big and important and momentous happens in the markets in the world, I'm supposed to get an immediate special message out to all of my subscribers and folks that follow me. Now, I'm about due for a weekly video anyway, so we'll cut the day short and get a special message out uh, today is once I saw this morning that the Baltimore Orioles were in first place in the American League East once again and that uh, Paul Levine's new novel Bum Rap where he combines the characters from both the Jake Lasseter and the Solomon Lord series is available for free download by Amazon Prime users today I knew I had to get on here right away and let you guys know what was happening all right, obviously, just kidding. You know, everybody's a little spooked. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is down 350 points, or just a little bit shy of 2% today. And of course, you know, the big fear we had the blow up in Greece uh, over the weekend with the Greek government. Notice I don't even need to try to pronounce these guys' names anymore. The Prime Minister uh, told the Europeans he was done, not going to negotiate. We're going to go home and we're going to have a referendum on these terms. And Europe just said, okay, but you're doing it without our money. So, very tense situation in Greece. The markets are closed. The banks are closed. They're limited to uh, 60 euros a day withdrawal if they can find an ATM with cash in it over there. So it's just a little bit messy in Greece right now. And that's got the markets kind of spooked. It's a huge indictment of the financial system and everything that we've done that uh, allows a nation as small as Greece to have borrowed so much money over the last decade or so that they are in a position to be this sort of threat to the European financial system and the global equity markets because clearly Greece is sitting over there they've uh, it's not a huge player on the world stage but they sure have everybody shook up so uh, they do have a 1.7 billion dollar payment due to the IMF there is no way possible for them to make that payment unless they draw down funds funds from the European Central Bank and that simply does not look like it's going to happen so we're probably going to have a Greek default that'll shake folks up a little bit more unless some kind of 12th hour deal is reached there's still a lot of money speculating that in fact you know we're going to draw this out make it tense and then we'll all come to a deal it may play out that way it might not when you get this thing to a vote in Greece, well, the Greeks don't want their pensions cut. They don't want their taxes um, raised. They don't want the tax collectors to uh, take a serious attitude and start collecting all the taxes they've been ignoring over the years. They don't want any of this. They may be willing, folks, to try to give this a go on their own outside the Eurozone. And I can't even make a case that that's a horrible idea, but they would have to default across the board on all of their debts in order to be able to afford to do that. That would be really interesting to see how that plays out. This is going to whirl the markets for a little bit more. Um, we do own a couple of Greek banks, folks, in the portfolio. There's a small position. We've always known that it was a long-term call option on the future and survivability of Greece. We're not selling. We're just going to hold it. We're willing to take that like any call option purchase, we're willing to risk the zero because if one or more of our two banks survives over the next 10 years, they will turn in to enormous winners. We have great co-investors in these things like Wilbur Ross, David Einhorn, bunch of you know, John Paulson, bunch of other hedge fund guys. So we don't feel like we're alone. Those guys will be aggressive about doing whatever they can to protect their and therefore my and your stake in the Greek banks. We're just going to see how it plays out. If we're dead wrong, we're not the hedge fund guys, okay? We don't have billions in this thing. We got a couple bucks in it. If we lose, it's less than, I think, a 1% loss to the overall portfolio. So we'll take the shot. It's, there's still a good chance something does get worked out in Greece, even if they exit the Eurozone. These are two of the stronger banks, so there's a good chance at least one of them will survive. And again, we're looking at it 10 years down the road. It could still pay off very big. If not, you know, if it works, big gain. If it doesn't work small loss I kind of like that sort of trade so now lots of talking heads on the TV right now you need to do this you need to do that and this is what's going to happen in Greece and they're going to vote we don't know okay we simply don't know trying to guess how the Greek populace is going to vote on this is an absolute waste of time trying to figure out what carrots or sticks the European the Europeans may break out here at the last minute to force them back into a deal 
we don't know. Let's just sit still and let this all play out. We'll talk to, touch on that sitting still thing here a little bit more in a couple minutes. Uh, more immediate concern to American markets because it has huge implications for the municipal bond market, for the municipal bond insurers, uh, and of course the municipal bond uh, mutual funds and closed in funds in particular that are widely held by American uh, U.S. income oriented investors, and that's Puerto Rico. They've come out and just said, hey, we can't pay. There's this amount of debt that uh, y'all have so generously lent us over the years simply cannot be paid back. And throughout my career, I have wondered how Puerto Rico, a relatively small island, great place to visit, wonderful territory of the United States, uh, could continuously come to the muni bond market and just borrow so much money. The bonds were so attractive because, of course, they were double tax free, state and local and federal, uh, so triple tax free, really, in all 50 states across the United States. And a you know, certain class of investors loved them because they had a little bit higher yield than, than uh, local municipal bonds might. But uh, they borrowed an enormous amount of money. No way they're going to pay it back. So what's going to happen? We're going to see defaults which is going to kick back in many cases to the bond insurers like MBIA and uh, short guarantee. And that could very well cause them some very serious 2008 type problems. We'll see how that plays out, if there's going to be a way to work out or negotiate any of this debt um, that Puerto Rico has outstanding. This could be a serious shakeup in the municipal bond market with some interesting implications. Now, I'm going to be watching this closely for a couple of reasons. First off, a lot of the Puerto Rican banks have recapitalized over the last five years and they're not in horrible shape. So if we get a big shake up down there, it's going to be a couple of, like Greece, there's going to be a couple of surviving banks. If they get beat down far enough, it's going to represent a tremendous opportunity. So we're going to be going through some of the filings, digging into the statements and loan portfolios and securities portfolios of some of these Puerto Rican banks over the next few days, just to see if we do get an opportunity to get some money into those on very advantageous terms. I'm going to be watching very closely the municipal closed end uh, market because if we get panic selling in municipal closed ends, uh, it's going to be a baby in a bathwater thing and investors will sell them all. It happens every time we get one of these panics. So if we can pick up a muni closed end fund at you know what may be a six, seven, eight percent tax exempt yield because of uh, panicky selling uh, that doesn't have enough uh, exposure to Puerto Rico. Um, to, el to eliminate basically the discount between the price and the net asset value. It's going to be a very interesting time to pick up a few of those in spite of the uh, concerns of rising interest rates next year. So we're going to be watching that very closely uh, for bargain opportunities in municipal closed-end funds. Maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't, but we're going to be looking for it. We're very aware that it could in fact happen if Puerto Rico starts to default and we see some panicky type selling by uh, more conservative income oriented investors. So, all right, so everybody's telling you what to do. Uh, you know, you got to do this because of Greece, and this because of Puerto Rico, and this because the Fed might raise rates. Folks, sit still, okay? You know, stay on top of it, pay attention, sit still. There's, this is not a time to do anything drastic. We're still just a few percentage points off of all time highs. Um, there is not that much direct exposure, particularly in the United States, to Greece. It's more of a problem in our European portfolio. But even there, the European banks that we own should more than survive uh, any problems from having to write down Greek debt. So. Prices are not down that much. We took a little bit of a hit today. Uh, maybe we get some more this week. Maybe we don't. No way to know how the market reacts to this continuing mess or how the continuing mess plays out uh, over the next several days. Don't make any panic moves here. Do not, um, do not confuse this with a significant sell-off as of this moment where you need to run out and do something. You don't need to do anything. This is not a magnificent creation event. There were no long lists of stocks hitting 52-week new lows and creating bargain buying opportunities today. We had a sell-off from up around all-time highs. Okay, We have a long way to go, unfortunately, before this becomes a significant inventory creation event that gives us a reason to celebrate it all. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm just you know, point blank, as Warren Buffett pointed out in his 1997 shareholder letter, I'm a buyer of securities. I'd rather see them go down than up at this point in my life. I'm 54 years old. I'd love to see one more just whacking 
of the stock market here over the next year or two. So I can get a ton of this cash that's built up uh, as we've been selling appreciated securities and setting you know additional investment funds aside over the last couple of years. Um, to get money invested on terms that look like 2008, 2009, when we're buying these great quality companies at you know 60, 70 percent of book value, and we're buying uh, more pedestrian businesses at 40 and 50 percent of book value, and there's just bargains everywhere, and the hardest decision to make every day is which super safe and cheap stock am I going to buy today? I would love to see that happen. I hope the Greeks kicks it off and you know the market comes down 25 30 percent i'd be happy little i'd be doing a little happy dance around my office we need to adjust the way we think about stock markets hey you talk to a 40 year old guy who has 20 25 more years to invest and you know they're just thrilled that stock prices are going up in the short term and they panic when they go down they should be doing exactly the opposite you know it should be more of a Darn it, the market went up, you know, another 15% this year. I just got a $10,000, you know, year in bonus. And I really wanted to put it to work on great terms. I was hoping this thing would crash. Instead, you, you get exactly the opposite. And they're happy to chase stocks higher, which, going back to all the research surveys, is one of the chief reasons that individual investors so badly underperform the market and the super investors like Buffett, Seth Klarman, and, and folks like that. So... Let's, uh, you know, let's learn to love lower prices, and we hope that this does, in fact, turn into a significant opportunity. Just remember, we have over 60% cash in the deep value portfolio, well over 40% in our international portfolio. We've even got about 15% in the income portfolio because we've sold a couple things and dividends have piled up, and we just haven't really been able to find a lot of really good stuff to buy. So we would love to see a significant inventory creation event. But as of right now, today, Monday, June 29th, we do not have one. The market is off, you know, a little less than 2%. It's a bad day. Uh, if you came in fully invested, you're not a happy camper. You're probably very nervous about what might happen over the next few days. If you're a deep value type with a lot of cash accumulated, well, you know, it's just another day. Besides which, we had a bunch of the stocks in our deep value portfolio actually make significant moves higher today. And, uh, of course, if you're in banking or profits, you know, we had a takeover today at a 35% premium to Friday's closing price, giving us a 100% gain in the stock. It's hard for us to get upset about what happened in Greece. We had a fantastic day in the market. So everybody calm down, take a deep breath. It's really not time to do anything, no matter what the TV has to say about it. If you're properly positioned with safe and cheap stocks and lots of cash, you're in great shape. Now, let's also consider where we are at this moment in time. As I said, we're just a few percentage points below all-time highs. And when you look around, you know, real-time markets, what we just kind of take their temperature once in a while, the value line uh, median appreciation index is at levels, you know, that indicate that the markets are more likely to go down than up. So is the uh, market cap to uh, gross domestic product ratio, which Warren has told us is his all-time favorite indicator of, of market valuations. That's very extended. It's above 2007 levels and, you know, an area where we see prices retreat before. We're nowhere near 1999's disastrous levels, but it's it's kind of inflated, as is the type of ratio. So, you know, if you take the market's temperature, it's it's closer to a top than a bottom, in my opinion. And you got a lot of smart people. Carl Icahn just you know, called it a bubble the other day. Uh, he's very concerned about high-yield markets. High-yield markets crack. The equity markets are going with it. I absolutely promise you. Uh, Montier in the fall called the market hideously expensive. Seth Klarman has warned us on several occasions now that the market is extended. And there's a Sam Zell um, has talked continuously and did again uh, uh, over the weekend at a presentation that there's a disconnect between Wall Street and Main Street, and it's very worrisome. You've got the stronger dollar that's going to impact uh, corporate profits. All this could continue to pressure on the market. So this little 350, you know, point down day in the Dow, this is not an excuse to dig the money out of the mattress and run in there and pay 20 times earnings and five times books for blue, book value for blue chip stocks. Just sit still, stay calm. Our time will come. It's not today, but today might be the kickoff for it, which would be uh, a wonderful thing. As I said, we have to learn as value investors to love and anticipate and look forward to lower prices. 
Personally, I have no intention of retiring tomorrow. I don't need higher prices today. I need lower prices because I've got cash and I need to get it to work. Adjust your mindset. Think more like a long-term private equity investor and you'll end up with returns that look a lot more like theirs and a lot less like the individual investor who underperforms the market uh, by such a wide margin historically. So that's kind of where we are. Um, I am excited about the Paul Levine book coming out, and the Orioles are on ESPN tonight. I cannot wait. I'm going to read and watch baseball, and uh, it's going to upset the female contingent around the house, but the Orioles aren't on TV that much down here in Florida, so I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity. I suggest you do something very similar and not lose too much sleep about what went on in the stock market today and what may or may not happen in Greece in the weeks ahead. Anticipate and look forward to an opportunity to get your cash to work on much more favorable terms. It's not time to buy until we see the ghost of Hattie Green stalking around the lot there at Trinity Church and Mr. Womack's pickup truck is spotted heading towards town to get to the brokerage office. Then we will know that we are very close to what Charlie Munger uh, once called an extraordinary opportunity that gives our a chance to unburden ourselves of all this troublesome cash and buy, buy assets and companies at fantastic prices. We're not there yet, so watch the game tonight, read a book, spend some time with your family. Don't sweat all this. It doesn't mean all that much in the long run, and that's what we're all about at the Deep Value Investor at the long run. Have a great week, everybody.